Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, we are going to just finish up covering your exam one material, and this is going to be a pretty short video just covering the um, reactivity of carbonyl groups and the three carbon-based nucleophile reactions that we have been made aware of in the lecture. So let me just jump right in with the reactivity of carbonyl groups. So there are a lot of different functional groups in organic chemistry that have carbonyl groups, which are the carbon-oxygen double bonds. But for the purposes of this chapter, we're just going to talk about aldehydes and ketones. So if I were to draw a generic aldehyde or a generic ketone, the carbonyl groups are these carbon-oxygen double bonds, all right? So I just want to talk a little bit about the reactivity of that, and there are two rationales for the reactivity of that carbon. So if we just took that same generic aldehyde, I can rationalize that there is a dipole moment in the direction towards that oxygen because oxygen has a greater electronegativity value than that carbon. So we would have a net... I mean, a localized negative charge on that oxygen and a localized positive charge on that carbon. So if we have a localized positive charge on a carbon, would that be a nucleophile or an electrophile? Well, if you said electrophile, you're right. So these are electrophilic. All right? So that's the first rationale. But if I wanted to rationalize it in a different way, I can take that same generic aldehyde and I can resonate a pair of pi electrons up onto the oxygen, and I can see that there is a localized formal charge positive at that carbon. So at this position, we have this positive charge, which also means it's another electrophile. All right, so you can use whichever rationale you want to um, realize that these are electrophilic species. So over here, I just took a screenshot from your textbook to kind of visualize the reactivity of these groups. I thought it was a pretty good visual. So if we were to categorize the hybridization scheme of that carbon that is um, in that carbonyl group, we see that it's an sp2 hybrid. So if you remember back to organic one, we told you that sp2 hybrid, um, hybrid molecules uh, have this trigonal planar geometry. So that allows for nucleophilic attack at either the front face or the back face. So we would expect racemization. So if that, that, gener that general scheme of um, reaction would look like this as an end product. So we just made this carbon nucleophile um, bond over here, and now this carbon is specifically a chiral carbon because we see that we have four different substituents bounded to an sp3 hybridized carbon. So clearly, we're going to have to talk a little bit about some stereochemical consequences from going from an sp2 hybrid to an sp3 molecule. All right, so let's just jump right into the... Um, main reactions that we see in this chapter, all right? So the first one is uh, the addition of the Grignard um, reagent to this molecule, and um, it actually gets the name of the Grignard reaction. That's why I put them in quotes over there, um, and it's probably one of the most important reactions that you will learn in organic, too. So again, we said back in that last video that organometallic compounds are negative, localized negative at that carbon that's attached to the metal because of the magnesium having a lesser electronegativity than that carbon. So our nucleophile is this Grignard reagent, and we're going to attack into this um, partially positive carbon of the carbonyl group. So if I were to draw mechanistic arrows in purple, we see that those electrons from that carbon-magnesium bond are going to come to this um, a carbon that's electron deficient and push those electrons up, all right? So the product of this um, step one would look kind of something like this. Okay, so that's the product of step one. And then step two is just remember that pronation step for that alkoxide anion. So your products should look something like this. All right, so am I done? 
No, the answer is I'm not done. Because what did I just do with this reaction? Well, before I went from an sp2 carbon at that position, but the same carbon right here is now an sp3 hybrid. More specifically, it's chiral at that position. So we would expect a mixture of ena um, enantiomers at this position. So if I were to draw in the stereochemistry, it would look something, we would expect products like this. All right, sorry for the bad handwriting, but it's something like that. All right, so that's the Grignard reaction. So let's move on to the organolithium addition. So it's the same schematic approach. So we have MELI, and MELI is basically just shorthand notation for CH3LI. And that is going to be nucleophilically negative at that carbon, so right here. And we are going to attack into that positively charged carbon of that carbonyl group. So if I were to draw the mechanistic arrows, it would be the electrons between that bond going into this carbon and pushing those up. All right? So the general reaction scheme of this would be um, this. So this is the product of step one, a methyl group. And then we see that the second step is just a proton to um, uh, acidify that alkoxide anion. And remember, we are racemic, so we would expect a mixture of diastereomers in this case. So we would get OH, a methyl group, and we would keep that, as well as Okay, so these are my products of that reaction. Okay, so let's just move on to the final reaction, the acetylide addition reaction. So we recall that we did acetylide addition to extend the carbon chains in organic one. It was pretty much the only reaction that we knew how to extend the carbon chain back in orgo one. But now you can see that organic two is all about extending the carbon chains with other um, nucleophiles. So anyway, this sodium is just a spectator ion. So we actually have the acetylide ion once it's dissociated. So it looks like this, and that's a nucleophile. So that nucleophile, pair of lone pair electrons, is going to attack that carbon, push that up, and then the second step is going to be a protonation step. So I'm just going to skip right to the products because I think you guys are pretty good at this by now. So the products would be something like this. as well as this. And you can rotate and not show the hydrogen in plane. You can pretty much, you know, draw the stereochem whichever way you want. Um, but that's a very valid answer as well. All right? So I just wanted to make one more note of something at the end. And I said that Gilman reagents do not react with aldehydes and ketones. So recall that the um, polarity of that carbon metal bond dictates its reactivity. So the carbon magnesium bond is a lot more polar than the carbon lithium bond, which is a lot more polar than the um, carbon copper bond. Okay, so that carbon, carbon copper bond is not polar enough to make it a good nucleophile to do addition into these molecules, all right? So I hope that helped, um, and email me with any questions.